Hello, pre algebra students. Mr. Giamini coming to you with Lesson 6-6, Volume of Prisms and Cylinders. Something we talked about today in class that we're going to need some work with. Uh, it is definitely one of the skills that from years previous I've known that kids have struggled with a little bit. In part, they're struggling because they don't want to follow the steps of the formula. Everything's like kind of plug and chug as we talk about. Put in the numbers in a calculator and just push a number and see if we get equals and go from there. This is really going to require some diligence on your part, some effort, and just some time on the uh, and time and patience. So for volume of prisms and cylinders, it's great because we use the same formula. V, which stands for volume, equals, now notice the capital B, standing for the area of the base. So you have to be careful because cylinders and it could be different types of prisms. Rectangular prism, triangular prism, you have to analyze the base. So the base could be a different shape, and depending on the shape, that's the formula you'd use. So let's go with the cylinder first. So I have here V equals area, uh, B, capital B times H, and capital B equals area of the base. So I'm looking at this shape, and I could see that I have a circle. And that circle has a diameter of 6 feet. The height of this cylinder is 15 feet. So what I am going to do is I will answer it both in terms of pi, because I'm dealing with a circle, I'm dealing with pi, and using uh, 3.14 to represent pi. So first let's go V equals, and hopefully I have enough room here, capital B times H. Well, first let's find the B, the capital B, and that is the area of the base. Now because we have a cylinder, both bases are the same. So I know that the area for base, or circle, sorry, is pi times radius squared. Uh, now, we don't need 6, we need the radius. Well, if I take half a 6, because remember, the radius is half of the diameter, or the diameter is twice as long or large as the radius. So if the diameter is 6 feet, that means the radius is uh, 3. So I'll take pi times 3 squared. Okay, well, I'm going to answer this in terms of pi, so that's 9 pi. Now I have to times that by the height because now I've checked. I have the area of the base. Now I have to times it by the height of this. So the height is 15. So I then go volume is equal to, uh, let's see here, 15 times 9. 9 times 5 is 45. Uh, put the 4 up top. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 4. That's 100. And 35, it's 135 pi, and because you're doing feet, it's cubic feet. Uh, let me just double check with my calculator here to make sure my calculations are correct. So I just did, I'm confident that 3 squared is 9, but let's just double check 15 times 9. That doesn't give me 135, so it's 135 pi uh, cubic feet. Now, if I want to figure out in terms of using pi as 3.14, I would just keep volume equals, now let's just take 135 and times it by pi. So times 3 and 14 hundredths. That'll give me 423 and 9 tenths, and that is cubic feet. Cubic feet. All right, so just kind of review, though, the answer in terms of pi. That's what it looked like, and then when I multiply it out, and I multiply by 3.14 as pi. Uh, now, let's go, let me change colors here. Let's go to this one, and the same thing. It's a prism. It is a triangular prism. Uh, we can talk about how our bases are triangles here. Now, if I want to figure out the volume of this, the volume of this triangular prism, same thing. V equals area of the base times the height. I'm going to treat this triangle right here as the base. Okay, so that's going to be my capital B. I have to find the area of that base. So area of the base equals, well, for triangle, it's 1 half base times height. Okay, base times height. So I have 16 times 12. Let's see here. 16 times 10 would be 160. Two more 16s would be, what, 32. Is that 192? Let's double check with the calculator here. 16 times 12. Okay, 192, but then I'm going to take half of 192. So we're going to divide it by 2. When I multiply something by half, same as dividing it by 2, so let's divide that by 2. And I get 96. So my area of my base is 96. Now, but remember, I have to also multiply it by the height. Now, if I turn this sideways, you would see that this would essentially be the 
height. So I can multiply this now by 20. Let's see, 96 times 10 is 960. 96, 960 doubled is, what is that, 1912? Let me just double check. 96 times 20. 1920. So my volume equals 1920. And they don't have a unit here, so I'll just call it cubic units. All right. Hope that helps you out. Now, the real, the application of this really comes into this. I'm going to clear this stuff real quick. Uh, the real application comes into a problem like this, where this triangle, this triangular prism, really doesn't have a height. It doesn't have a height. It has a base of 4. It has this of 11, but we're talking about the height now. Or could I turn this upside down, but then I still don't know the height of it? Oh, but wait a minute. I can't take this, draw a line from this apex, and get the altitude this way. Now I am trying to find what? Oh, it looks like Pythagorean theorem again. So this side here becomes a 2. My hypotenuse is 4. I need to know what this leg is here. So you got to be careful because you have to analyze these shapes. I'm not going to finish this one for you. I want you to think about it on your own. All right, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.